Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Awaken to Your Soul Pass. I am your host, Barbara, and today I am joined by the wonderful Monica Miller, and we will be talking about how to not overshare your story in an authentic way and I've been looking forward to this talk because uh, as we already explored a little bit together Monica and me when we met up before this interview there are a lot of ways people are teaching storytelling there are also a lot of ways people are executing storytelling and we just want to shed some light on um, the right way the not so good ways and the other ways that are in between to give you a better handle on how to share your story Story in a way that still feels good, but that also attracts and reaches the right people that you want to be reaching. So thank you so much, Monica, for being here today and talking about this with me. You're welcome. So glad I am here. Me too. So maybe it's good to start a little bit with your background, eh? because uh, uh, people don't really know you. So how um, do we end up talking about storytelling together? Yeah. When I was younger, I actually had a speech impediment and a lot of people used to ask me, well, you know, can you repeat yourself? Can you slow down? And as you can probably imagine, that annoyed me because I was like, what, five, six, seven years old. I was all ago, had things to do, don't have time to slow down my speech. If you can't understand me, don't be bothered, right? Um, but it wasn't until I learned how to write and utilize my writing skills that I became that I just became a lover of words. And through that, I really feel that that was the catapult of my writing career or just my love for storytelling. I've always been a storyteller. I wrote books while I was in high school. I wrote a whole series, a whole novel series. Never got published until I was, um, my first book actually got published I think I was right out of high school going into college, and that was a fiction book. And then whenever I was in um, college, I wrote human interest stories for a newspaper. And it was that time that I found that I have a love, hearing people's stories, capturing the essence through these stories and then showcasing them in a beautiful light because I could take an hour interview and turn it into a 500 word human interest story article. And that was a ton of fun. And I found that as I grew and developed in my own entrepreneurial journey, that that was a natural skill of mine. I was able to listen to people and really hone in on like, oh, this is what you're trying to say. They're like, yes, that's what I've been trying. That that's what exactly it. And I was able to bring out what was stuck inside their heads and really bring it into, well, of course, now the online space into the digital world format, I guess, if you want to call it that way, um, and help them show their brilliance. And I have an affinity for storytelling. I think it's just because I love hearing people's stories and I love hearing their offers and I love to see how I can merge them together. So that way though, they are communicating the value of their offers, but at the same time being authentic and vulnerable with their story and building that trust that their audience craves right now. So that's kind of how I got into storytelling. I mean, it's a it's been a long journey, but now it's just like, yeah, this is what I'm really good at, and I really enjoy it. I love that, and it's indeed a special skill because people often struggle with their words. They have an idea of what they want to be saying, but either it doesn't come out, or it comes out, and then when other people read it, to them it means something different than the way it was written. And and then there's also a mismatch, right, between the words that you're using and what other people hear in your words. And I know a lot of people are struggling with finding the right words. So what have been some of the things that you've been seeing when people are not telling their story the best way possible? Well, the first thing is, don't take any offense to this. It's just reality. They, I see so many entrepreneurs trying to share their story and it's kind of boring. <laughs> like, it's, it, 
they're, like it's not like you are writing bad copy. It's not that you're not saying anything wrong. It's just the way it's structured is not very, I would think, you know, interesting. It's just, is kind of boring. That's the first thing I see. Another thing is what you just said, and we both seen this happen. People are trying, you know, they are wanting to communicate their story. They're wanting to share, but they either are like, overshare or they don't share enough that you are following through with it you're like what what just happened like you went from point a to point c and i'm like i feel like there should be a point b and i'm not seeing it um another mistake i see is putting a whole bunch of text together instead of breaking it up into where you can read and scan uh, because people are scanners now and we have to cater to these people. I know, I know. The writers in us probably is like, no, we want to write in big block pale graphs, but that doesn't work. Um, so that's some of the mistakes I've seen. And of course, you know, we were, we're going to kind of jump into this uh, eventually, but just to, like they just begin to sh overshare where people are, it, it, it almost is like, you know, they're trying to share the, and be vulnerable and it's almost to the point where you can feel the desperation mm. in their energy behind their words because it's almost like they're oversharing, especially when it's in the moment and they might be emotional at that present moment in time writing. Yeah. And we're going to kind of talk about how to write when you are emotional in just a couple, you know, eventually, I know. I just want to talk about the mistakes. <laughs> that's exactly it, because those are really valid points. And then that's what I'm seeing as well. Uh, another thing that I'm also seeing is that people um, go to someone who teaches them how to write their story and how to uh, make it more dynamic. And then they have a framework that people should be following. And you can always spot the people that are using that framework because it's always structured exactly the same with exactly the same aha moment and the same oomph moment. And then it also doesn't feel authentic anymore. And uh, for people who are about 80% of the world, they might not tell the difference. But the people who are more... um highly sensitive, empathic, uh, energy sensitive, who also feel the energy behind the words, they feel it's more of a trick that's being executed than it is a heartfelt, authentic story. And then the energy doesn't match the words. And then you also sort of repel clients because it, it feels weird when they read it, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think, you know, when if, if none of these methods are bad or wrong, the none of that is so. I hope you know, I know the listeners are probably you know, you know, that it's not we're not trying to say that it's wrong or bad, but I think one of the things we want to be real careful about is making sure that our energy in that moment is of an energy of a given and really wanted to share because we want to not because we have to post something online today or we have to share this part of our story or oh you know it's at the end of the day and I don't have you know done anything in two days I better share something oh yeah this story I'm pretty out there when you are sharing your story and we are all guilty of this I know I can be guilty of this and so I just want to bring it back to reality and also say, remember to hone into why am I sharing? Do mm -hmm. I really want to share this particular story because I want to, or is it because I have to, or I should? Yes. Or and I I think that's you need to, to be consistent. A lot of people say yes. it's consistent in your posting. You need to post something every day. And that's mm -hmm. also what I see happening, especially with the more energy sensitive entrepreneurs. We don't have all great days. And when I am not in a great type of energy, it becomes very difficult to write something uplifting that will attract people. And if we then feel like, oh, but I have to, because I cannot go a day without not posting, I need to post at least multiple times every 
day and you're starting to force yourself into doing something that doesn't feel like it's naturally coming from within you, then you're also tapping into the wrong energy that is depending on your target audience can be very important. So that is also an important factor, right? Knowing who you are writing for and knowing for which medium you are writing, because there's a huge difference between writing a book, writing an article, uh, writing for the website, writing emails, uh, writing social media posts, and also where they are being read. Yeah, and I think you just want to make sure that whatever energy you are in, that you're showing up the best. And I love what you just said, Barbara, that we're not always having good days. I mean, some days we're really busy. I know I get into my busy days where I don't have time um, or I don't make time rather um, because I'm busy doing other things. And I want to say it's okay if you're in, you know, when things are going on in your life and you are not able to show up energetically in a good space, it's okay to not show up. It's okay to take a break that day and know you start again tomorrow. We as a messaging person, I do preach consistency, but that doesn't mean every day. Mm. And when you are consistent with the right energy, it's going to look like you're posting way more than what you really are anyways, because your energy is going to be there. You can better post something once a week and make it really heartfelt mm -hmm. and, and energetically correct and from a place, a good place. Uh, then posting every day from the wrong type of energy. That's that's completely true. Uh, but there's a lot of misconceptions around writing. And uh, one of those misconceptions, you already spoke a little bit about it, is um, how much do I share? How vulnerable do I need to be? Where is that line? Because you cannot write something generic because that will not attract your, your people, your tribe mm -hmm. to you. So you need to open up, but how do you handle, there are multiple facets, so let's tackle them in order, but one is the, how do you handle your honesty? How honest are you going to be? How much detail are you going to be giving? Uh, so, so how much do you share and when are you oversharing? That is an important thing in there. But what I also encountered was um, my mother didn't like me telling my story. And she sort of wanted me taking it down. So how do you uh, deal with people, in this case, my mother, but can also be other people that feel that um, you cannot write that? Mm. Yeah, I've had m multiple people tell me this as well. So let's talk about the first thing about, you know, how honest do I be? So I firmly believe, first of all, you need to be safe in whatever you share. Whatever you share, you need to feel safe. If you're approaching that, like a safety wall of just like, oh, I don't know, like then it probably means it's not either it's not time to share, or it just means maybe you just you're not meant to share right then and there. So. Notice where that wall is for you. And it's going to be different for each and every one of us. Okay. Like it's going to be different. There are some stories that um, like I won't share until maybe six months from now. Like today I shared a story about how I wanted to quit in the summer. And now six months later, I had the record, my, my best year yet. And, you know, it took me six months to say that. And some things, some stories just takes time to share and that's okay. So give yourself that grace. But I would say, you know, come up to that, you know, whatever that honesty barrier is for you, it's going to look different for everybody. And so just no notice that. And for the people, the people that you're thinking like, oh, well, my mom won't like this or so-and-so won't like that. On Facebook, I don't know about the other ones, but on Facebook, there's a lovely thing where you can customize your audience. So your mom doesn't have to see that. I actually have, you know, if I'm feeling like I don't know if I can share this with my parents or my mom seeing this, I will put it where they won't see it. Like a handful of people won't see it because I, if I'm going to share, I need to be comfortable enough. Not that I don't have a little bit of comfortability. Okay. We're not saying that. But what I am saying is have that accountability enough that if I am going to share, but I don't want my mom to see it, mm -hmm. then you know, there's some people that I have customized saying, like, okay, this content is not going to be shown to these people. 
um, because it, I, I just had to feel safe. I mean, there are some people that I've gotten rid of off my Facebook because I know that I, I'm a I'm pushing a point in my story that I'm like, they're no longer in it. So I'm going to take them off because I can't be authentically me mm -hmm. with them being on my friends list. So feel free to even take them off your friends list if, if they are the ones stopping you. If you feel like it's always that one person, then maybe it's time to cut them off <laughs> and get them, you know, get rid of them as a friend. Um, or to, you know, whenever you do write these posts, make sure that they don't see it. Make sure you have uh, done your audience well, they don't see it. Um, is there anything that you would like to add? You know, I would love to hear your thoughts about, you know, that oversharing or like that honesty barrier. Like what, what does it look like for you? That's a lovely question. So I'll, I'll answer that in a minute, but I first wanted to respond to what you were saying because I hadn't even thought about that option. So I'm very glad that you're sharing that. But what I meant more was I was sharing my story, my hero's journey story on my website, on my about me page. And okay. I completely comfortable in sharing that story and I just wrote it the way it was and then my mother read it later and she became incredibly upset that I had written about the things that had happened to me in my childhood on a public place like the internet mm -hmm. that was the thing and what okay. I see in in sharing is when I first started out I didn't share anything like that so it also really ties into your personal journey how much you've grown as a person and that ties into how much you are able and willing to share of your story if you are still in the middle of it or you haven't done your healing journey around it your healing work your shadow work or whatever is necessary to heal that part it becomes very difficult to write about it especially from a an, an negative type of energy or from an inspirational type of energy and so that definitely plays a role in it and for me I had gone through a lot of healing and I had grown as a person and then I felt comfortable sharing the story and that's what I later also told my mother I cannot be someone who mentors other people who guides other people if I cannot be open about the things that have happened to me and the way through I found for myself because then people will not relate to me they will not see or feel that I understand them and that I can help them and it's also not particularly fair to ask people to open up about their most deepest pains and things to you when you are protecting yourself behind the generic story mm -hmm. I, I love that you brought up the uh, story about your mother or, and like using the website example or I, yeah you were saying like that was you know that's happened to you one of the things that I won't I would love to encourage everyone to just think about is like you know we were not born to cater to everybody and what makes sense to us may not make sense to someone else. And that's okay. Like you sharing your story on your website didn't make sense to your mom. But for you, you knew you needed to share that piece. Like you said, to connect with your audience, to be the leader, to be the example that you are to your audience, to your clients. And, you know, she may never get that. And that's okay because that's not, that's her journey, but you have your own journey and we have to start owning our journeys and knowing like, you know, Susie Q over there is not going to understand. And, you know, learning to be okay with that, mm -hmm. learning to be okay with, you know, they're not going to get it until, you know, hopefully one day they will, but today's not that day and that's okay. So yeah. knowing, you know, I think at this point, you know, understanding for yourself, what can, how can I be okay with somebody who's not liking my story? So that's some inner work you have to do on your own and really come to peace with owning your story fully. Exactly. And, and not understanding can be something that's happening. In my mother's case, it was also part of her journey. But she felt that my story said something about how she is or was as a mother in that period. And that also means that I touched upon a pain within herself that she still needs to hear. So it's still or heal. It's still part of her journey. And that's something you need to be prepared for. If you tell your story, but it also involves other people and those people might 
read it and it doesn't have to be your mom or your dad it can also be a boyfriend or an ex-husband or children or um another family member friends you know whoever you decide to include in your story because they played a relevant vital part in it that needs to be told if they have not done the inner journey if they have not done the inner work then it can impact them on a variety of different ways um which only means that they haven't done their inner work yet but what i see happening with people who haven't done their inner work yet is that they sort of project their anger upon the person that's telling the story and then blame them for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm. I mean, I've been accused of stuff like that, and I'm like, hey, I'm just sharing my story. Um, an idea that came out when you were talking, you know, for those of you who have, you know, stories with, of course, other people, of course, in it, and you're like, I, I can't, or I feel like I can't share, or my mom or my ex husband, you know, you can always say a person in my life did such and such, and you can always keep the pronouns plural for that. You know, not saying if it's a he or she or any of that. Um, and you could just say a person. So just know that there are, if you are wanting to share your a certain story, but you don't want to say, well, my ex-husband or my mother or whatever, you can say, you know, someone dear to me or someone who claimed they loved me. You know, you can always find ways around it until, you know, you're ready to say mm -hmm. my ex-husband my mother and maybe that's maybe you'll never be ready and that's okay it's mm. okay but there's always ways around it if you are at that point where you're like ah, can't share yet can't share who that person is yet but still if you say when i was growing up this and this happened to me then still your parents can respond to it when they recognize themselves in it or your caregivers or whatever so be prepared i think that's a, a part of the message that we're trying to give that when you start sharing your story in an authentic way that there can be people who are less than thrilled by it <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to mean that you are sharing your story incorrectly or that you shouldn't be sharing your story. It just means it, it says more about them than it says about you. It says that you are ready to talk about what happened and to share it in a sense of educating or making people feel that they're not alone or making people feel heard and seen and understood while the people that played a part in it are not ready to see it that way. And so be prepared for things like like that and and now that we're on the topic anyway it would also be really great to explore how you can then do that in an authentic way how can you share your uh, story in a way that you stay true to the story without um, manipulating it too much or omitting too much because you want to please other people and not hurt them um, but at the same time also not going into the minute details or the or the, the deeper details that might be oversharing because they could drag you into maybe an emotional part that hasn't been healed within you and i've seen that happen too mm -hmm. yeah with storytelling it's so important to make sure that you're honoring whatever journey you are on you know like whatever wherever you're at in your journey honor it and it, you know so you, and be it just goes back to you will know where your honesty barriers are and when you start to approach on them i think um also at this point if you are wanting to go into in details if you're seeing that then that's a point to stop and ask do people really need to know this yes do and is it adding do story yes yes and you know always think about the outcome what is the outcome of the story you really want people to hone in on is it to be inspired is it to be to maybe you know rally the, them up and be like you can do it you know or is it to give them something maybe hope peace that they're loved so if you're starting to get into, into some details think is this adding to my intention of the story. If it's not, it means you're probably oversharing and to take that out. If you're getting to the point where you're thinking, well, is, you know, is she going to 
say something, he's going to say something, go back to the intention. Who is this for? And if it's for your audience, because you want to inspire them or maybe call, you know, rally them up, whatever it is, then it's like keeping that intention on them. And like we were saying earlier, if, if you just feel like, oh, I don't know if I can share this piece, it's just going back to how can you reorganize, not reorganize the story, but we share it in a way that makes not only it, are you comfortable and it meets your honesty barrier, but also it progresses a story and it helps your audience to be engaged mm -hmm. and that they can feel related. A lot of the things that you can do with these type of situations is just keep it on like you focus, not you, but like your audience, like you focus, like have you felt this way or, you know, have you experienced something like this? You don't have to go into the details to communicate a message. Mm -hmm. You certainly can share a message powerfully, profoundly, without mentioning names or, you know, even circumstances that somebody may be like, oh, yeah, that was totally me. You know, you don't have to do that. There's always – the English language is very creative, and you can become very creative – in how you share your story while moving the story along. Mm -hmm. um, and one more thing, you know, if, if you're feeling like you're hitting a, um, a hurt or a nerve in your own life, then that may be a signal to you to, you know, one, go back to your attention, but two, asking yourself, Am I safe to, you know, am I safe now? And three, do I need to do some more work? And does this story need to wait till a little bit later mm -hmm. because some stories need to be rated upon. Some stories don't, but some stories do. Yes. And that's all. And it's all okay. Yes. You're absolutely right. And I love that you're sharing this because it ties into one of the best advice that I have been given. And it's uh, always right with the end result in mind. Uh, that's mm -hmm. also what you mean. So if you are writing about what happened to you when you were a child and you are writing that because you want them to buy your online program, you're going to be writing differently than when you want to talk about what happened to you as a child. And you're writing that because you want to make people feel heard, seen and understood. So mm -hmm. you need to write with the outcome in mind. Well, how do I want my audience to feel after writing or after reading mm -hmm. this? Do I want them to feel like, oh, this is the problem, the program that's going to solve all my problems. I want to register for it. Or this is the webinar I need to follow because it will get me one step further. So maybe not the end result, but at least one step further in, in my journey. Or do you mm -hmm. want them to feel like, oh, finally, someone who gets me. And so what do you want your audience to feel after reading what you wrote? And what action do you want them to take after reading what you wrote are very important things. And indeed, sometimes, uh, and, and that ties into what we talked about earlier, sometimes you might think with your mind, oh, I need to be sharing about um, a rape that happened because I counsel rape victims. And uh, this might be a relatable story, but you haven't fully healed yourself from that event yet. Then it becomes very, very difficult to write about it you will feel internal resistance and mm -hmm. some of us have then the drive and the push to push ourselves through it and to write it anyway and uh, that is not the way to go i think a story always needs to come from within but effortlessness with with effort mm, yes yes love that yes it needs to come from within and effortlessly because I know whenever I share my stories, the stories that gets the most engagement, gets me the most, you know, the leads and all that is from stories that just bubbled up and just came out. And there was no effort. There was no resistance. It's just I wrote it and uh, I had fun while I was doing it yes. and people responded. So I love that you just tied in that energy and, you know, just know that there's so many different angles to your story. So even if you are like, I love the example of like, you know, say you're counseling rape victims, but you have experienced your own rape, then like, well, could you, could you talk about the emotional state, the 
um, you know, other pieces of that. So you can let other people, other victims know, I see you, I heal you without even going through your own, um, your own wounds around this. Mm -hmm. So I love that. That was a really great example of, you know, you can share your story through other, like a, almost like a different perspective mm -hmm. on uh, what you actually do. Of course, and how you are also the different ways in which you can share your story mm -hmm. because if you stay with the example of the rape and then the rape counseling but also being a rape victim yourself um it, talking about it on camera especially a live a facebook live that's putting yourself truly on the spot you will only be able to do a facebook live about a traumatic event like that when you've completely 200 percently healed everything otherwise you will start crying on camera i can guarantee you that that will happen so and, and, and even when you pre-record it and you think oh i when i start crying i got it out right that will probably mean a lot of work and that will be a little bit easier but maybe it's not ready to be told on camera yet because that's also being vulnerable because people can actually see you and they can see your face and they can feel your energy a lot better when you are on camera because it's hearing seeing and feeling wrapped in one so mm -hmm. maybe start with something a little less confrontational and maybe that means that you first write a short social media post or maybe eventually a blog post where you're relatively anonymous you can even write it under a pseudonym if you don't want to write under your own name uh, to get into it. And, and because writing about it can also be very therapeutic. It can also help you gain a different perspective or work through stuff and, and healing from it. But it's less naked than <laughs> being on camera. Exactly. And, you know, even those of us who journal a lot, you know, you can take some of the journaling that you've done and, and put it out there. If that is something, you know, like, especially if you're like journalism inspiration or stuff, you know, maybe you are, you know, rallying in yourself. Maybe you're giving yourself encouragement. What if you could use some, not all of it, but some of it to even put it out there? Because that could be a source of a story because that's you and you're sharing yourself in a powerful way. So don't think about, you know, yes, um, all, there's all sorts of ways to share your story. And don't forget that there is, you know, if you're a journaler, you can utilize some of that content because those are the content that you are, you know, as, as a writer, you're pouring yourself into it. And that's whenever you're probably in one of the highest states of, of that high vibe and that, you know, energetics of being authentic. Yes. And you can always, of course, edit whatever you don't want out. So that's easier. But it's already written content that you just have to repurpose and retweak a little bit to share online if that is something you would like to do as well. Mm -hmm. And another thing that also works really well for me is letting myself be inspired. And that can be mm -hmm. in various mm -hmm. different ways. Sometimes I see a, a quote, uh, someone is sharing a quote or a video or uh, a, a piece of text or, or something, uh, maybe a, a saying or a meme or something, and it inspires something in me or it triggers something in me. And then I can use that connection, that inspiration, that trigger to write something and then maybe also share that quote and then write my story that's pertaining to that specific quote uh, on that day. And so that could be a source of inspiration. Uh, another source of inspiration could be after I've read books or seen movies uh, that trigger something or then inspire me or um, my one of my favorites is walking in nature. I get so many downloads and inspirations when I'm walking in nature and you will regularly spot me standing still, quickly typing out the ideas on my phone, <laughs> dictating them so I won't forget and then continue with my walk. So find inspiration, Let be open to letting things inspire you to tapping into the story that can and must be told in that moment. Yeah, I love that because inspiration is everywhere. And the number one way to start practicing it is just to become aware of it. 
for example, I posted today, I saw this ad, it was a hook on phonics ad, and they utilize a uh, software like Paint, mm -hmm. and they made this graphic from it. And it was so, you know, what, like early 90s, you know, old computer style, uh, us millennials, would have remembered it. It was such 80s. It was just like, oh my goodness, it just, it caught the eye. And I love that they were targeting millennial parents. And I wrote a whole post about like they used a, you know, something so simple, kind of ridiculously simple. The graphics were awful, but that's how it was, you know, in the 90s on paint. <laughs> but they did like they were talking to millennial parents and the comments alone was giving it enough visibility <laughs> and engagement that they were probably getting sales. So I would just I use that as inspiration to communicate to my audience. This is why you should know your audience. They knew they would need they needed millennial parents to buy their product. So they talk to them and the way that we know exactly what they were saying. So find inspiration everywhere. It's all around you all day long. It's just becoming open and aware of it. So just start practicing. Maybe is you know, at the end of every day, asking yourself, well, what inspired me today? What was it that I saw that just made me, made me laugh? or it made me smile, or it reminded me of something. Because this is a practice, you know. It's not like one day I woke up and saw all this inspiration. Like, no, it took time. So begin to notice and open, because the more you are open to it, the more inspiration you're going to see. Um, and then you'll be at probably where me and Barbara are, where we probably get a little bit too much inspiration, where we can't always keep up with it. <laughs> Yeah, and Some they, days. Exactly. So uh, another tip, uh, because we're, we're, we've delved into the tip giving right now, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, but another tip could also be don't force it. Don't try mm -hmm. to force yourself to write when you're feeling blocked. Don't force it when there's no inspiration. Um, don't mm -hmm. berate yourself when there's no inspiration. Uh, it's not your fault, but then, you know, choose to do something different. Go and dance mm -hmm. in your living room or go and sing something or go and treat yourself to your favorite, in my case, chocolate thing, whatever. <laughs> or just yeah. Know nature or you know do something completely different but be kind to yourself be mm -hmm. loving towards yourself be understanding towards yourself and i found that when i do that then there will always be a moment where suddenly inspiration hits and i just <laughs> pour out everything yep. Well, before I could go into stress mode and thinking, oh, my God, and I had this plan for today and today was my writing day and I didn't write anything. And tomorrow I'm booked solid again and I didn't write my video script. So then I cannot work on Thursday because Thursday was my recording day and I didn't write anything today and, you know, go in full blown stress mode but that also doesn't help it's only making you more and more stressed so uh, and, and and so it's it's also about it's not only getting to know your audience really well but it's also about getting to know yourself really well mm -hmm. now a lot of people teach you that you need to plan everything and that you need to plan in your calendar moments for writing moments for recording and stuff and if that works for you wonderful mm -hmm. but it never worked for me and I took that to mean that I was a failure or that there was something wrong with me or, you know, because it works for, for everybody and it doesn't work for me. But I need a more higher level planning where I think, well, I need to I produce one of these episodes every week. I produce an, insp an uh, inspirational video every week and I produce a book review video every week. So I produce three videos every week on my YouTube channel. I know that that needs to happen every week. But the moment that that happens and what I'm going to be writing about, I leave open. And I don't uh, leave it to the last moment. So I have it planned usually a couple of weeks in advance. So even if I have an entire week of non-inspiration, I'm still not stressed because there is still enough in the pipeline to have it fed. And I've learned to trust that there will come a moment where I would effortlessly produce multiple videos because inspiration struck or at least be able to write multiple scripts or script ideas that I can then record off for the next couple of weeks. 
weeks. And that's what I learned about myself. So it's it's not only learning your audience and how to speak to them and what their problems are or what their desires are or both, but it's also getting to know you and how you write the best, how your storytelling works. Yeah, agreed. And I'm just like you. Um, I have tried the plan and I just, it's just like I start to plan. I start to follow the plan. Then three days later, I get off the plan because my inspiration, you know, I find something else to be inspired by. So I go off the plan and I've just realized much like you, I just trust that things will come to me when it's meant to. And um, one, another thing I'm learning is like there was ebbs and flows to my creativity. Some weeks I am like, bam, 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 my creativity, my inspiration is all is at an all time high. And maybe that I'll go through another week where I don't, I can't, you know, it's not like I'm, I stop posting, I still do, but it's just like, I'm not that high energetic. Um, I'm just not high vibing right now. And that's okay. So just, I love that you said, you know, give yourself grace because it, you do give yourself a lot of grace knowing that creativity inspiration is ebbing and flowing in your life and just trust that if you don't have anything to say today it's okay i'm sure you'll have something to say tomorrow and if not it will be okay because it's coming just wait for it exactly i love that i've been really loving our talk and i think we shared a lot of really wonderful things today so <laughs> you my target audience the listeners out there i would love it if you would firstly show your love and support for our show by liking the video but also if you could share in the comments what is the biggest insight you got out of today's video or what was the most eye-opening thing that we shared today or what other thing would you want to be sharing with us we would love it if you could share that in the comments and if you're already doing all of these things then maybe think also about sharing this episode with your audience your tribe the people that you know on whatever audience you're finding this or whatever platform you're finding this because you are probably knowing a lot of people that could really benefit from listening to this talk and by sharing it you will be doing them a really big service so those were the things that I wanted to ask but I can also imagine that you thought I'm never going to be a writer. I just want to outsource it to something. Where's Monica? Where can I find her? How can I talk to her? Because she needs to do this. <laughs> Where can they find you, Monica? Yes, you can find me on my website, monicawrites.com. So write as if you're writing a book or writing a post with the S, monicawrites.com. You can also email me if you are looking for a um, somewhere to write your content, your social media content, your website, your newsletters, and you want to infuse more storytelling, but you just want someone else to do it. I'm your gal. You can email me, Monica, at MonicaWrites.com, and we can hop on a 30-minute free call where we just talk about your goals and how I can best support them. If you are like, I want to write my story, but I don't know how to begin. Um, I'm not sure if I know who my honesty barrier is. Then I also mentor people in sharing their story and how to show up. And I even help you write it on calls and help you share it. You have, you'll be fully supported as you begin your storytelling journey. And so if that's you, email me, let's hop on a call. You can always hop on the call at monicawrites.com forward slash calendar and get on a call with me and let's talk about your goals and how we can get your audience hearing more of your story so they can be connected, inspired and buy from you. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Monica, for being here. And if the links went too fast or you couldn't get it or whatever, don't be alarmed. I am making sure that both Monica's links as well as my links uh, are visible probably in the, below this video in the show notes, but otherwise to the sides or on top. It really depends on what platform you're catching this on, but the links will be definitely in the show notes for you to find and for right now i have nothing else to say then thank you monica for being here and talking about writing and being so inspirational and thanking you audience for being here as well and listening to us talk thank you so much for having me it was so much fun
It was my pleasure. Have a really great rest of your day, everybody. And I will talk to you again next week with a new guest.